Getting your FAA drone license in 2024, let's go. We're gonna go into five simple steps that I'll show you from beginning to end on how to get your drone license. Step number one is going to be creating an account with the IACRA. Step two is getting your FTN number. Step three is actually booking the date for you to take your exam. Step four is studying for your exam and taking your exam. And step five is registering with your new exam number to get your card, your FAA drone pilot license. So don't worry about the process. I'm gonna walk you through all of it and it's going to be super, super, simple. Let's get into it. Step number one, get your IACRA account made. So how do we do that? Go to this website right here, iacra.faa.gov. Don't worry about finding that on your own. I've linked that website in the description under step one. When you get to this website, it'll take you to this page right here. This is the IACRA homepage. At the top right, you'll see there is an option for username, password. Obviously, you don't have an account yet, so you want to press register. Once you press register, you will see this page pop up. Once you're on this page, all you have to do is press applicant and scroll down to agree and continue. Once you do this, you will be merging step one with step two, which is obtaining your FTN number. This is the FAA tracking number. This is what you'll need to schedule tests, to take the test, and to give your information back to the IACRA in order to get your license. So after you've gone through and press continue, you will see a place to put your user information. You'll see a place for security questions and creating your username and password. So go through these, fill out your first name, last name, date of birth, your or email address, your security questions, and then create your username and password. My advice would be one, make sure you're using an email that you check regularly because the FAA and IACRA are going to send your documents to this specific email. You don't wanna give something that you're not going to check because you might miss it, something might expire, it could be a whole mess. So make sure you do that. And then also if I were you, I would use my email address for my username as well. Just keep everything concise and organized. So once you've done that, press register and you will get an email sent to you. In that email, you will find your FTN number and you will be ready to come back to the IACRA website on the home screen and log into your account. Bam, just like that, you've already completed step one and step two. And here's an important note, make sure you write your FTN down somewhere. This is very important for the remainder of your drone FAA journey. So you don't wanna lose that whatsoever. On to step number three. Step number three is actually scheduling for your FAA drone pilot exam. And this is honestly just as easy as the first two steps. So what you want to do is go to this website, faa.psiexams.com. Again, check the description for this link so you don't have to look for it on your own. Once you're on this website, press create an account. You'll come down here where it says verify your eligibility. You want to type in your FAA tracking number, that's the FTN that you got in your email, then your first name, your last name, and continue. From here, you'll be able to schedule the specific date and the specific test location where you can have your FAA pilot test exam. And I know what you're thinking, yo, Kenya, I haven't even studied for this exam. Why am I going ahead and scheduling it? To truly be honest with you, I think everyone can pass this exam between seven and 10 days, depending on if you have anxiety when you're taking tests, if you're a good test taker, et cetera, et cetera. Once we get to the study portion of this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to pass in only about a day and a half of studying, but I'll also give you multiple resources to where you can study even more if you feel like you need to do that. But honestly, I think if somebody has seven days to study and they're just studying a little bit at a time and making sure they're looking at the correct things, the test Test is pretty easy. It's not trying to trick you. It's not really throwing curveballs at it. It's more like, have you seen this before or have you not? And if you look at the things that I'm going to give you during the study section, you would have seen them. So don't stress too much about the test. Just be intentional and actually go through the resources that I'm going to give you in a few minutes. So once you've found a testing center and you've scheduled the date for your exam, you're going to need to pay the fee for the exam. At the time of making this video, the test cost $175, and this is a one-time fee, assuming you don't need to retake the exam. This also is a refundable fee, but if you try to reschedule or cancel within 24 hours of the test time, then it will no longer be refundable. So if you need to make any changes, make sure you make those at least 25 hours before you go to take that exam. So day before, two days before, 
before, you should be okay. Once you've checked out and you have everything set, you're ready to go to step number four, and that is studying. So studying is different for people. People have different methods, things that work for them. But for me personally, I'm very much a see as I do type of person. So YouTube videos are my bread and butter. I watched four videos that really showed me everything I needed to learn. Two of them are quite long and the other two are pretty short and simple. Between these four videos and this practice question website that I'm about to give you, I really feel like you'll be able to really do well on this test. Even with minimal studying, I think this is more about understanding the concepts well and then just seeing different versions of the same question over and over again so don't be fearful watch these videos and I honestly think you'll be okay here are the four videos the first two are very much a broad understanding and going through every individual part of the exam the first one I watched was FAA part 107 study guide pass on the first try this is by Altitude University and honestly this is just really in-depth and shows you just about everything you need to know. It doesn't go super, super, super into detail about the small specific things, but it gives you a very good overview on the entire exam and what you need to do to pass. The second one I watched is the Free Drone Certification Study Guide, FAA Part 107 SUAS Test by Tony and Chelsea Northrup. This was honestly like a very deep dive into the questions and it even has a lot of practice questions at the end just to get you in the rhythm of what the test will look like. I will say these two videos are pretty long and it can get a little tiresome, so just be prepared for that. Next, I watched the FAA Part 107 Chart Reading Questions Walkthrough. So I actually watched this video the day of the test in the morning once I got to the location and oh my gosh, I am glad I did. I would say probably 50 to 60% of all the questions I had on my test, if not more, were literally, look at this figure, tell me something about it, asking me some specific question. And I didn't really understand how to read the charts as well as I thought until I watched this video. The practice questions are amazing and it really walks you through exactly what to look for, how to eliminate a lot of the chart so you know where to hone in. Highly, highly, highly recommend. And the last video I watched was Pass the FAA Part 107 Test Walkthrough Q&A with Explanations Part 107 Study Guide 2023, and that is by Half Chrome. And honestly, again, this is one of those videos where it was just nice to see practice questions and have someone really talk you through why the answers are the answers that they are. And I feel like between those four, that really gave me everything I needed. To be fully honest, just the first two gave me what I feel like I kind of needed, but I wanted some extra security and I would recommend these four total videos for everyone. Watch through one time, watch through two times, however many times you need, you'll be okay if you watch these. But let's just say YouTube really isn't your thing and you'd prefer more official learning, then you can go to the FAA website, the website is faa.gov slash uas slash commercial operators. Again, this will be linked in the description below. If you go to this website, you'll see this page right here. If you click step one, learn the rules, that first link right there, it will actually take you to what I would call a study guide almost of exactly what you will need for everything that's going to be on the test. You can see here that it has a ton of information and really goes through every single thing that you might possibly need to pass this test. So if that's something that you like, then I would highly recommend going through and just reading on exactly what the FAA itself is saying, hey, this is what you need to know. And the FAA even gives us a study guide specific for this test. So if you go back one page and you scroll down a little bit, you will see study for the knowledge test. After you get there at the bottom, it says knowledge test study guide as a PDF. And you'll see here again, you have a full study guide that is going to go through every single possible thing that will be on this exam. So this is very long and it's a lot of reading, but if that's the kind of studier you are, that's perfectly okay, go this option. For me, it helps if I have someone reading and explaining, but hey, Everyone's their own person, to each their own. Do what works for you. So use that if you need it as well. Once you've studied and your test date is here, all you have to do is go in and take your exam. For actually going into the exam, most testing centers will provide you a calculator, some paper to write on, and you will get the handbook that has all your legends, your charts, and all the references that will be referenced in your actual test itself. Other than that, if you take your state issue ID, that's all you need to bring with you. And last but not least, step number five. Once 
once you've already passed your exam, congratulations by the way, now you can come back and register to get your actual drone license. The testing center will give you some information on your test. You'll be able to see the score that you received and you will also get an ID exam number. Take this exam number, go back to the IACRA website, which you first made in step one, and now we're going to register so you can get your actual drone license. Once you're in the website and you have logged in, you will go to accept for applicant and then hit start new application. From here, you will choose pilot, certifications, you will go down to the bottom where it says remote pilot initial, make sure that the small unmanned aircraft system is there and press start application. Once you're here, all you have to do is go through, fill out all of your information, check in all the boxes, sign where you need to sign, put in your exam ID number and submit this document for the FAA to approve, run your background check and send you an email saying that you are now eligible to be a pilot. From that point, you will get an email that gives you your temporary ID for when you're going out and flying right now. And in a few weeks, I think it's usually around six weeks, maybe three to six weeks, you should be able to get your actual card in the mail that you have put for your address in the account. So that's all you need to do. It's that simple. It seems like a lot because of all the new profiles, all the signing in, all the signing documents, things like that. But it's honestly not a bad process and it's super easy once you know what to do. So that's all you need and you're ready to go. Fly your drone, make your money. Congrats. Really quick tip if you have Apple products, Safari does not work well whatsoever with the IACRA website. I actually had to call the help desk and walk through some of the process and the only issue I was having was I was trying to use the Safari browser instead of using something on like Google Chrome, Firefox, etc., etc. So if you're going to do this, whether it's on your MacBook, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it is, my advice would be to download Google Chrome. That's what they recommended and everything worked perfectly. So if it's glitching, if stuff is going wrong, don't worry about it. Just change the browser that you're on and you should be okay. Cool. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and just let me know what your process was, how the test went, all that good stuff. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're looking for more drone content, I'm kind of getting into FPV right now, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And if you're looking for the best drone in 2024, make sure you check out this video on the screen right now. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.